Welcome to episode 18 of the Land Partners Podcast. I'm your host, Connor, and of course I got Matt with me. Hello. And Dave. How you doing? So we got another jam-packed episode for episode 18. We're going to start the episode off talking a little Madden about our league. It's uh, really taken off on us. Matt's going to run down the free PlayStation and Xbox games for the month. Dave's going to retro review Tech Mobile for the NES. Uh, me and Matt are also going to talk about Shadow of Mordor since uh, Shadow of War is coming out this fall. So we want to definitely talk about Shadow of Mordor. Uh, our discussion for today is Destiny 2 preview, since that's coming out today, I believe. Uh, we're recording on a Tuesday, you're listening to this on a Wednesday, so that is already out there. So in case you're thinking about picking that up, we're going to do a little preview. Not a review, but just a little, we're going to talk about what we want to see out of Destiny 2 going forward. A couple news stories, and our list for the day is Superhero Games. Who we are is just we are three guys who have full-time jobs, families, and other hobbies who just love to game. What makes this podcast different is that we will, of course, talk about new games, but we will also talk about games that came out two or three years ago as if they were new. We just want to share our experiences playing these games in case you're in the same spot as us where your gaming time is limited. Please download the podcast by Apple App, Stitcher, Google Play for you Android users, or go on iTunes and hit subscribe. That way you get our weekly episodes uploaded to you every Wednesday. If you have questions, discussion topics, or list ideas, please message us on Facebook, send an email, thelandpartners at gmail.com, or just leave a comment. All of these links are also down below in the description. Uh, check out our Land Partner Twitch page. We've been uploading a lot of footage on there. Uh, my Madden games, Horizon Zero Dawn. Matt's also been putting some game footage up there, so please check it out. Uh, before we get to Dave's retro review, let's do a quick Madden update. So as of last week, we, we left off and the league was starting just to kind of come in formation here. So a quick summary, uh, Dave is the commissioner of a Madden league, Madden 18 on Xbox one. We have how many users, Dave? 12. Uh, we have 12, but I'm calling it nine right now. Cause one has not joined and one has not yet played a game he's had two simulated weeks okay so still a pretty good chunk of people nine and uh i am currently three and one sitting on top of the afc north dave what is your record right now i'm currently three and oh and my next game is against the computer controlled seahawks i have three user wins dave had a rough schedule starting off he had uh how many user games in a row three yeah three. i had three and then i'm going back to user games uh right after this short little um I guess vacation from them, <laughs> and I think I believe I have seven total, or I'm sorry, six total. So um, our buddy Tony's got the most; he's got seven. Yeah, I have six. Uh, newcomer late last week in the league, uh, a friend of mine, Charlie. He picked probably the best ideal situation where he picked up the Chargers, who he has, I think, maybe one or two other user games. Plus, he's the Chargers in an already uh, computer-controlled AFC West. So I think he's got a. His, he should pack his bags for the playoffs because he's, he's a lock. As long as he's not terrible, he should be locked yeah. up. So that's Madden. We're going to keep talking about that throughout the weeks as our league develops, and we're only in week four right now, so it's really early on. So moving on, Matt, how about you give us a little summary of the free games for the month, what people can look forward to picking up. All right. So, yeah, the free uh, – we'll start with the PlayStation Plus for the month of September – uh, for PlayStation 4, you're looking at a game called Hue, uh, H-U-E. Uh, basically, it's just a puzzle platformer where you get to shift uh, the different hues, different colors of the landscape to solve puzzles. Uh, the next one is, for me, the best of the bunch is Infamous Second Son. Uh, it's, you know, open world kind of, you're not a superhero, but you're a hero type. You have, you know, powers that you use to help uh, take down the evil kind of group that came into the city to take down heroes like you. Um, that's a really good game. Uh, then there's Sky Force Anniversary, which is uh, kind of an air shoot 'em up like you're in a ship, uh, and it's more uh, kind of fast-paced. You get to upgrade your ships. Um, then there's Strike Vector X, which is a first-person shooter, aerial, uh, dogfighting, competitive kind of multiplayer-type game which has actually gotten some good reviews. So that's that might be something to check out if you're into that type of gameplay. Uh, PlayStation 3 has a game called Hustle Kings, which is basically just billiards uh, playing pool, and a game called Monster Jam oh, Battlegrounds. 
What's that? It's called Hustle Kings, and it's a pool game. Yeah, because you're hustling the table. on the billiards table. <laughs> <Running the table, laughs> uh, <laughs> Monster Jam Battleground, you're in monster trucks, you're going through arenas, and then they talk about having kind of physics-based challenges outside of stadiums when you're actually in like a city-type environment. Um, and they also have Sky Force Anniversary for PS3. And then the Vita comes up with Hue and Skyforce, which were announced before with the PS4 and PS3. Um, I think we all said before Vita is pretty much dead. Um, Xbox games with gold for this month. Uh, they're looking really good, actually. Force of Five, Force of Motorsport Five, which is in the line of popular Forza games from Microsoft. That's one of their big giant uh, kind of series for them. And then a game called Oxen Free, which is kind of an indie type looking game uh, where you're it's it's advertised as a supernatural kind of thriller type game where you ex, uh, explore this island. Um, and that looks pretty cool. And for the arcade, they have Hydro Thunder Hurricane, which is uh, racing with like speedboats, um, which looks pretty frantic. And then for Xbox 360, they have Battlefield 3, which is at one time used to be kind of a popular uh, war shooter, first person shooter, EA. Um, and those are your free games of the month. I want bad company. That's what I want. Did, did anyone, yeah. did anyone, uh, see that, uh, jet ski racing one and immediately think of that N64 Wave game? Racer. I think it was like wave race or something. Wave yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That game was awesome. It's like a clone of it. Wave racer. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, wave race is back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that game was, was awesome. I thought the same thing. Uh, infamous was my first PS4 game. I, I think it came bundled with my PS4. I'm not sure if I bought it. I can't see myself going out and saying, like, this is the game I want to start my PS4 life with is Infamous, but I'm pretty sure. It might have been. See, I can't see anyone saying that, so you probably <laughs> yeah. didn't get it bundled with. Pretty sure. I think it was, uh, it was like, one of the launch titles, I think. It had to be, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, moving on. That's our free games. Moving on to the retro review. Dave, impress us with Tech Mobile. So I'm actually reviewing Tecmo Super Bowl, and there is a reason why I'm uh, reviewing that one instead of regular Tecmo Bowl. So <clears throat> Tecmo Super Bowl was originally released in 1991 by the Japanese developer Tecmo. It was the first sports game to have the licensing to use both team and individual player names, and that's why I chose this one over regular old Tecmo Bowl. Um, sports games prior to this one actually only had rights to either one or the other. So they'd either have actual sports teams with legitimate licensed names, or they would have only players as in like Jordan versus bird, you know, basketball or whatever. So, um, <clears throat> Tecmo, Tecmo Super Bowl was pretty awesome. It had 11 players on each team that cannot be injured on defense because there were no defensive subs. Uh, but the offense had 11 starters, just like real NFL. Plus, they had six backup players. And having backup players was, like, unheard of, especially, like, actual NFL backups uh, to these teams. So that was a new thing at the time. Uh, the game kept all the parts of Tech Mobile that people loved, like breaking tackles by, like, mashing the button as hard as you can. There's no penalties in the game, which is a beautiful thing after playing so much Madden and getting a thousand holdings called on me. And of course, there is the awesome touchdown animation cutscenes, which uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure everybody loves. And even if they haven't played Tecmo, has at least seen them. In addition to those, you know, returning gems of features, as you will. They also added in for Tecmo Super Bowl a coin toss at the beginning of the game. Uh, like I said, the ability to substitute players, fumbles were a new thing, and also season stat tracking uh, for the regular season for it, actual licensed NFL players. And interestingly, it also offered playbook editing, which not a lot of people um, that I knew knew about or used. And there were three game modes. There's preseason, regular season, and Pro Bowl with preseason and Pro Bowl acting as like exhibition games and single serving modes while regular season was acting kind of like a story mode where the AI gets progressively harder as you advance through the season. The game would go on to have many sequels, all of them amazing. So my <laughs> pros and cons for Tecmo Super Bowl pros. I love the awesome rock, paper, scissors play calling. And if you call the offenses play by guessing what play they picked, you know, you get the automatic, you know, pancaking of the offensive lineman and then sacking of the quarterback yeah. or shut down to the run. That's really cool. Uh, the cut scenes, I got to mention again, because they're awesome. They only get better as the Tecmo games 
go on and on. <laughs> and then, in my opinion, and, 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 and I, I'm, I'm a really big Madden fan, but in my personal opinion, I will stand by this. Tech Mobile games are still the most fun PvP football games to date. And that's including Madden. That's including the 2K series. Tecmo takes it. Um, my cons, I only have two. Cons for Tecmo Super Bowl, no Tom Brady. So that's going to be <laughs> one major con. And then my only other con is that some players' speed ratings are crazy fast, and they cannot be caught if they catch the ball, some of the running backs and receivers. So I give Tech Mobile. Tecmo Super Bowl, I'm sorry. I give Tecmo Super Bowl a 9 out of 10 rating. Uh, I would still 100%, if there was a way to do a Tecmo Bowl League, I would drop Madden in a heartbeat and be part of the Tecmo Super Bowl League because it is a fantastic game. And if you've not played it, they have a downloadable version for the 3DS, and it has download play. So if you download it, you can face your friends. They don't even need a copy. Nice. What did we used to say after every touchdown, Dave? 12 for 5? Those uh, same character animation. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh yeah, twelve for five. 12 yeah, because he's five. high five. You're jumping dude high five <laughs> every um, single time. There was no that, that's also on the field, but he was the one getting high five. <laughs> yeah, it, well, there's no Tom Brady, so of course there's no twelve on the field. Also, uh, that's where the house salad started. Yeah, house taking it to the house. Yeah. Yeah, we made a lot of house calls. So uh, let's get into Shadow of Mordor with Matt and I. A little bit about Shadow of Mordor. Uh, this is also actually available on pretty much all platforms. Um, yeah. It was released in September of 2014, so this is three years old now. Uh, it's kind of mm-hmm. an old game, but uh, before we get too deep in it, I think it holds up as three years old. I mean, there's nothing really that had me saying, like, this is definitely three years old, like other games you kind of do. After right. a while, you know, three years isn't that long to see some aging, but it it, it would compete against games now uh, this mm-hmm. year. The developer yeah, is Monolith Productions. It took about 18-ish hours, roughly. I mean, you could make it 40 if you wanted to, but it took yeah. you know, around 18, I'd say. Um, so what it is, it's set between the books of The Hobbit and the trilogy of The Lord of the Rings. Or, I'm sorry, not the books of The Hobbit, just The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings books. So you basically just take control of a ranger named Talion. It's a third-person action-adventure RPG. It plays a lot like Assassin's Creed. A or, lot. Yeah, like very similar or um, or kind of like a, more currently think, Horizon Zero Dawn. It kind of plays a little bit like that. So it's kind of... The ha- combat, I think, yeah, is a lot. It's kind of like the Batman games, the Arkham games, where you can press Y or triangle to, to counter or block someone. Cause you're always swarmed by a bunch of people. So, yeah. um, then you get kind of combo hits on everybody. Yeah. So it, it definitely plays like that. Um, especially Assassin's Creed. What happens is mm-hmm. you get experience points and you unlock new abilities. So that's the RPG elements that you just kind of unlock new abilities as you go along. There's a lot to do in this game, whether it be, yeah. Main mission, side missions, um, isn't there's forts that you can take, yep. if I remember correctly. So there's a lot to do. Um, before we get into our good and bad, I want to talk about the main component of this game, which is the Nemesis system. Because yeah. the new Shadow of Mordor game, which is Shadow of War, coming out pretty soon here, the whole emphasis of this game is more of this Nemesis system. So Matt, can mm-hmm. you describe a little bit about this Nemesis system? Do you remember? I do. Uh, so the Nemesis system, it's very unique, and that's what I think set this game apart and made it a great game to a lot of uh, reviewers out there and critics. Um, so you're when you're fighting the orcs, there are kind of different ranks of the orcs that you're fighting against. So you know, there's like the lieutenant and the sergeant, and then the chief, and you know, you and they all branch together, so they're all part of like a unit and. What you do as you're fighting them is you can take one of them out, and then you know there's a little cool kind of uh, tree, menu, like right? Yeah, like a tree. Yep, and it shows you like who you've taken out, and if you're getting closer to the next one. Like a but the right, and the the cool thing though is that you could take people out, but then if you uh, waited too long, someone else would come and replace that guy. Um, and or if you died, the that. Uh, whatever rank they were, sergeant, lieutenant, general, whatever, they mm-hmm. could become even stronger. So right, yep, they got stronger. And, yeah. 
But <laughs> the whole reason I want to talk about that is because if I'm being honest right now, I think it is extremely overrated, that whole system. And that's just me. I'm just being honest. I thought everyone was so obsessed with this nemesis system. And now the new shadow of war is just all about this. What could we do now with the nemesis? Yeah. What did you, did you think it was overrated? Or did you think it was really that cool as everyone thought it was? I think it's a cool idea. I don't know if I was as, as excited as they all made it seem as they were and how cool it was. I think it's all, I'm always glad to see new ideas and new things kind of come through. But yeah, I think, like we'll talk about maybe in our pros and cons through towards the end of the game. It was kind of like, all right, I get it. You know, it wasn't me, something that I cared to see stick around to me. The nemesis system did not drive me through the game. Like that was not something where I was constantly checking. No. Like who, who's the next in line? Like who, who's the, who's the higher up? I did not care. <laughs> right. I did not. And the missions yeah. made you check it though. I remember the mission said, knock out all four generals of the, yep, nemesis, all of four. The nemesis. Right. And it's like, okay, they're forcing me into it. That's cool. But it, it wasn't anything that I was obsessed about. So uh, let's mm-hmm. go ahead and just fire through our good and bad because I feel like the Nemesis system was basically what made this game different from any other game that we've seen. Oh, yeah. Uh, a couple of good things I had, and then we'll just go to you. Uh, the mm-hmm. engine was awesome. The graphics were great. Everything yeah. plays extremely smooth. Like, I never had any hiccups, or and it just all felt really good. And the abilities were great. I mean, that's as far as my good list goes just because – all the key the key components of gameplay were all there. It was all solid. It was all good. Yeah. So there wasn't anything like that that bothered me. So what about you and the good? Yeah, I played on PC. So like you said, the game ran really well, which is nice for a PC player because usually when these types of games come out, they're um, kind of marketed for the console audience. But for it to come to PC and run that great, uh, really pleased me and it pleased the the PC community to see it not just be kind of a thrown together at the last minute port where it kind of ran enough just to be able to play it. It ran really well. Um, another pro was the just the combat. Um, I really liked the smoothness of the combat. You, you always felt like you were in control. And I think if you, if you got hit or lost a fight, like it was your fault, you know, you didn't feel like, it was the game's error on you, like punishing you for something you didn't do. Um, Yeah. I like the combat a lot. Yeah. And like you said, the abilities, there is a lot of depth there to upgrading your guy. And, you know, you get to focus on what kind of abilities you, what kind of player you want to become in terms of how you fight, or if you want to be more stealthy, you know, kind of that aspect of it. Um, I think the scale of the game is really cool. Um, You do feel like you're kind of in that, lord of the rings type timetable um you know you're in kind of that open field with just those castles and forts around um so i like that aspect of it um yeah so let's go ahead and yeah. just get into the bad here um and plus golems in the game so that was kind of cool isn't it so that's true like easter yep. egg and uh my I've, spoiler alert but three years <laughs> three years later it's like, your own fault. He's not much of a secret. <laughs> he shows up within the first couple minutes anyway. Do, do, yeah. you, do you think they used his character model for Kyrie Irving <laughs> in NBA good. Live 18? Or? I was gonna say, they use the same, they use the same engine. They, they, I was going to say, it's, I thought I recognized him before. I was like, Kyrie and Shadow, what? No, wait, no, it's Gollum. <laughs> it's Gollum. It's Gollum. All right, so the bad. Um, talking about the combat, I feel like this is basically the bad thing, the big thing yeah. that I had. The combat was fun. You know, fighting was fun, but but <laughs> at times it was just so annoying having 20, 30 enemies just swarming you, and everyone's basically what you would call a bullet sponge. Like, yeah. and obviously we're not shooting bullets, but you know what I mean, that they take 15, 20 slashes of the sword, and it's like, oh, this guy finally died. Now I got to do this again to 15 other people, 20 other people. Oh, wait, they sound yeah. the alarm. 20 more. They sound the alarm. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, my God. And it's, at some point you're just kind of running around and hoping that you could kind of pull yep. some of them and start slipping. It's just – it was – it was annoying. It got by to hour ten, least. hour fifteen. It was like okay, like I've seen yeah. this is so annoying. So how no, did you I, feel about that? I totally agree. Totally agree. That was insane because you're trying to go after these chiefs or generals, like we were saying. 
but then they're surrounded by 30 other enemies yeah. and yeah. you get in there and you're thinking to yourself, how am I going to get this guy without alerting this entire camp? And you basically can't, you have, they like want you to go in there and alert everyone. And then you're running around, like you said, like an idiot trying to find a way to like take everybody out. And it's super annoying because the battles last forever. Um, and then I think, I don't know if you have the same issue, but you're trying to find those little herbs to get health back. Um, cause they give you health if you uh, eat these little herbs and yeah, like yeah, they're scattered like, uh, around like horizon style. Yeah, yeah. So you're trying to find those just to survive and it, yeah, it gets really frustrating really fast. Yeah. You nailed it. Cause what you had though, that going back to that nemesis system, what happens is like, you'll, they'll put it on the map. They'll tell you like, Hey, your nemesis is here. And then you'll right. look like, Oh, he's around 40 guys and half of them <laughs> have bow and arrows and half of them can see across the map. And it's like, in order yeah. for me to kill this guy, that's going to be a fight alone. Like, even mm-hmm. if it's just one-on-one, that's going to be a difficult fight. Now I got 20 other guys to deal with. And yeah. if what I was hoping for Shadow of War, and it doesn't look like it's going to happen, but what I wanted to see for Shadow of War, for the new one, was them to scale that down, nerf it a little bit. I don't think that's happening, though. I feel like it's getting even greater in scale. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like the <laughs> enemies are becoming harder. The nemesis system is becoming yeah. more. So, I mean, I'm not... I don't see myself picking up Shadow of War based on Shadow of Mordor. So let's get into our overalls before we wrap up, wrap up this review. Yep. Oh, oh, wait, one second. I just had one last thing to add to that. If I'm LeBron James, I'm really upset that the Cavs were that bad that Kyrie would leave for Middle Earth. I mean, <laughs> I know Boston. I can see Boston. But Middle Earth, like, was I that bad of a teammate? So if I'm LeBron, I'm giving this game a 3 out of 10. Uh, maybe even a 2 out of 10 too soon. <laughs> Two out of ten? Two. 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 Kyrie. Number two. Never mind. Number two. So uh, my overall is I gave it a 7.5. And what I liked about it, I mean, I liked what they were doing. I liked the combat of it besides the part where I'm running around and trying to fight off 10, 20 enemies. I just wish it took a a little less of effort to kill a guy, not 15, 20 hits. The Lord of the Rings lore was there for me because what I did is I read through, I read The Hobbit. And then I read the first book of the Lord of the Rings, and then I started playing the games, the game, and then I finished the last two books. So like this year has been huge in the Lord of the Rings for me. Uh, so I was all I was super into Lord of the Rings at the time. So there was no shortage of lore for me. But <laughs> yeah. uh, it, everything we talked about with the Nemesis system and the and the combat, I, it's seven point five. It was a good game. A couple things were missing for me to call it a great game, though. What about you, Matt? I was a little bit lower than you. I gave it a seven out of ten. I still, like you said, it's it's one of those games where you enjoy it and you like what they were doing, but at the same time, there was nothing there to really push it over the edge. No, I didn't think the story was anything memorable. I I don't even remember yeah. the story really. Yeah, As it wasn't much. Tom Brady, the basic plot, but right. Doing that. All right, so that was uh, Shadow of. Uh, now I'm getting it confused. Shadow of Mordor. <laughs> Mordor. <laughs> Shadow of War is dropping soon. Um, I don't think they're changing much. I think they're taking what they did before and kind of just building it up more and making it better, which is good because Shadow yep. of Mordor is extremely popular. Don't you know? Just because it didn't hit with the land partners doesn't mean that it wasn't a popular game. So let's move on to our discussion topic, which is a little preview for Destiny 2. All three of us have played Destiny, and mm-hmm. all three of us kind of have a different opinion on Destiny uh, I'll, I'll give my opinion on Destiny first, and then I'll throw it over to you guys. My opinion on Destiny was I loved it. I was really, really into it. Matt and I played a lot of the multiplayer. It was awesome. I would say we easily played well over 50 hours of the multiplayer, if I were to take a guess. It was a lot. Yeah, right? a lot. We played a lot, so we definitely had a lot of experience with it. I liked it up until the point where I just felt like the unbalanced nature of the multiplayer just took over and I couldn't yeah. take it anymore. So, uh, Dave, how, how did you feel about Destiny? Because you didn't play with us. You were a little bit of a late bloomer as far as Destiny. Well, and you guys, I believe, had it for PS4. I had it for Xbox One. So, right. um, <clears throat> I mean, I still have it for Xbox One. And to be honest, I haven't played it nearly as much as these guys. But uh, what I did appreciate about it was that even though the story was almost non-existent, in a in a very like dark soul sense i did enjoy going through the little story missions and getting loot because there's loot to boot in that game i mean there's oh, yeah. tons and tons of loots mm-hmm. and i played like one raid 
and the raids seem pretty fun. Like if we had all of our friends together on the same console or if Sony would ever just, you know, suck it up and allow for cross platform play, <laughs> um, you know, there would be I think there would be many, many hours to be had. And I'm sure people who've done raids could agree. But I mean, that's pretty much my exposure to it. The multiplayer, I was never impressed from the beginning. I still think that Halo is a much stronger multiplayer experience than Destiny. And Destiny just felt like poor man's Halo with some cheap abilities kicked in. So uh, that was my take. So, Matt, real quickly, what was your Destiny opinion? Mine pretty much mirrors you, Connor, I think. We loved it and we played it a lot until we got to that point. Like you were saying, we picked characters that have this special power that we felt like was underpowered compared to the other characters in the game. So we got really frustrated when we noticed everyone else had the other characters that could just start annihilating us and we had no answer for it. So we got really frustrated with that. And our our characters were the uh, ground pounders, right? Yeah, I think we were called Titans, I want to say. I don't remember the exact titles, but I know we had the ground pound ability. Which seemed cool, and yeah. it seemed to work. But then, like other people had the like basically that blade the, thing, the yeah, blade where they literally just slice up people like eight <laughs> times in a row, and it got so insta kills, yeah. So moving forward with Destiny Two, what are some things that you guys are gonna want to see with Destiny Two in order for you to say like, okay, this is much better. This is a whole new game. I think, uh, like how Dave was saying earlier in Destiny 1, there really wasn't a story. So I think in Destiny 2, and I think I've seen and heard that they really did revamp and work on a, a good story this time around. So I'm hoping that that turns out to be good. I would like to see more of a story to get me involved and kind of understand who we are and what we're doing there and what we're fighting for kind of thing. Um, in terms of the multiplayer, just balance, just making sure that we all have the same... It, uh, chance of you know just coming down to skill like whoever's the better player is going to win you know and not because of some cheap superpower thing that they have um, I think those are my two biggest things I'm looking forward to seeing them try to, to make better Dave how about you gentlemen I think we're dancing around the elephant in the room that needs to be addressed here um, it, it, multiplayer who cares story mode who cares there are two things Destiny 2 needs in order to be truly great number one Bring back Peter Dinklage. If Dinklebot doesn't make a return, <laughs> Destiny 2 will not succeed. And number two, Tom Brady. If Tom I Brady makes an appearance in Destiny for 2, <laughs> I mean, you have yourself a, a mega hit. Tom Brady and Peter Dinklage. I think that even people on you know DS would buy the game. <laughs> so what I would like to see out of Destiny 2 is just more of the – like the balance issues, I would really like to see that a lot more. Is just making it more balanced. I felt like there were so many times where I'm just like, I had no idea why I died. Another, <laughs> another huge mystery out of Destiny, Matt, if you remember, was that, uh, like, remember how we were trying to figure out if the damage or whatever. Oh yeah. So if you're, so uh, each gun, you know, with all the loot, like Dave was talking about, you're always getting new weapons and equipment, and it would show you your damage that you're doing with your gun and. Me and Connor were always trying to figure out if we had a really high damage gun, were we doing that damage online or did everyone have the same damage together? Yeah. And we kind of read like both sides of that where we couldn't get a definitive answer to, okay, if that guy has a really awesome gun, is he going to just annihilate me or are we on the same playing field even though he has that awesome equipment? Yeah, it was, it was really frustrating not knowing. Yeah. So uh, yeah. is there... Any piece of information that you guys wanted to share as far as information about Destiny 2 before we uh, move on to some news? Uh, I've watched some gameplay. The game, As far as the game goes, it looks exactly the same. It looks like it plays exactly the same. Um, I know this one starts off with you losing everything. So if you played 200,000 hours of Destiny 1, that means absolutely nothing now. They took away everyone's loot and all your gear, and everyone starts from scratch. Um, so that's either frustrating or uh, freeing for some people if they wanted to start over. But uh, I know that's a big entry point is that you're just starting from scratch all over again. Um, and, yeah, I think everything's back. You know, the strikes, which are like the raids, and then they have yeah. the single-player campaign now. Um, and then, you know, they're going to always have, like, little events that they do 
uh, to keep people interested in the game. Yeah, I hope that the story is. I hope I um, have some uh, high hopes for that story mode since there wasn't one in the first one. So let's hope they kind of do something special with that. So let's go ahead and move on to the news. Big news story that came out was Xbox One. They're talking about they're rumoring a uh, keyboard and mouse compatibility for Xbox One X. Or is it, I don't know if it's Xbox One X or just Xbox in general. I'm not sure. I didn't hear the ex, uh, exact detail of that. But I do know it's, that it's just Xbox One. It's just Xbox One in general. I wasn't sure. If yeah, it was just all, for the, all X. the whole. I think the whole family of uh, Xbox Ones are getting it. But again, it said up to the developer. And if you forgot, uh, PlayStation Three already had keyboard mouse compatibility, and they left yeah. it open to all developers. And the only two developers that took them up on it were Valve with Counter Strike for <laughs> PlayStation Three, which some people forgot even existed. CSGO was on PS3 and you could use mouse and keyboard. And then there was also, I think, like an Unreal tournament or something that lets you use mouse and keyboard. But I mean it's up to developers and they just at the time were not interested, but I hope that changes. Uh, I'm I don't like this Xbox One keyboard <laughs> thing. I know you guys are all yes, finally. I I'm against it only because how are they going to filter that out playing online like Call of Duty or something? Because the people with mouse and keyboard have a clear advantage over people using a controller. I they're, I don't think yeah. that's fair. I don't think that... It, it's already filtered out. It's, it's, a, it's a, a, uh, every game that has cross, um, I guess you call it input play, has always given you the option. On the PlayStation 3 Counter-Strike, you would choose whether you didn't care if you were matched with mouse and keyboard or if you just wanted to search for uh, controller-only lobbies. So um, I mean, as long I, as there's those filters, I'm okay with it because I don't want to play with mouse and keyboard people because they <laughs> I, it's a different style of play, and I, I don't think that's yeah. a fair going up against that. I, I don't know if you're a high enough level player for that to even make a difference, Conrad. And what can I wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, what I'm saying is um there are probably lots of people with a controller that would that would wipe the floor with all three of us. So I'm not sure that we're good enough with a controller for it to actually truly bother us that people are using mouse and keyboard. I'm I just think saying that I don't want it. I just don't want to I want to deal with it. Well yeah. they're not making you use a mouse and keyboard. Are they gonna come to your house and say, Okay, Connor, throw away that PS4? No, controller. I'm saying I don't want to match up mouse and keyboard. I don't want to match up against mouse and keyboard people though. I'd want just all controllers and all mouse and keyboards on their you own. You'd have things. no clue. I'm saying you'd have no clue. Uh, you'd get spanked either way, I'm telling you. <laughs> so moving on to our next news story is <laughs> Call of Duty. Um they kind of made a statement today that they're looking to make more games about like history, like World War II, World War One kind of stuff, and I'm not in support of this. How do you guys feel about more of these old games? Yeah, I don't... I It's cool that they're doing the World War II right now. I think it was a nice kind of breakup of their series, but I wouldn't like them continuing to go down that road. I think we need to have them keep pushing for for new ideas and coming up with their own stories and things like that. I don't, I don't like that. They just keep recycling like history. Yeah. And it just seems like let's make 10 futuristic games in a row. All right. Now we're going to make 10 old games in a row until people get tired <laughs> yeah. of it. So yeah. Connor, I'm with you hundred percent. I think it just, I don't know. It's, I'm not into it. Um, like you were saying, you were really happy that Wolfenstein gave you kind of like an alternate future type or alternate past kind of thing. I I would be okay with that. I would be totally okay with Call of Duty coming out with like an alternate past where, I don't know, give give us World War II where, um, you know, Normandy never happened. There was like an intercepting, you know, attack that cut the United States off from entering Europe and you can still use the United States, but maybe more of Europe got taken over by the Nazis and you got to go over there and, and you know, it, you never turn the tide of the war per se. Yeah. Uh, France goes down, England goes down. Maybe you unite with like uh, African random militias to, you know, I don't know, like something, something different, Do something like Wolfenstein nailed it for me because it was a completely alternate, alternating yeah. the history like changing history like yeah. nazis win in that game 
And that sounds right. awesome. And it's crazy. It's you something that <laughs> you never. Not that Nazi's winning, by the way. Just, uh, just change of history. Yeah. I can clarify that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just it's just cool to see something different and refreshing. And Call of Duty is just going right back down this road to where they're Call of Duty Three and the big red one and all that stuff. So we'll see though. That could have just been yeah. you know a little rumor. All right, so let's go ahead and close down episode 18 of the Land Partners podcast with our list, the superhero games. So this could be any platform, any game, as long as it's superhero-based. Um, Dave, how about you start us off? All right, well, you guys probably, if you thought hard or maybe not at all, could probably choreograph my entire top three here. But number three, I'm saying Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse 2 for Xbox One. Um, American superheroes, man, they just don't do it for me. I'm going <laughs> I'm going Japan on this one. They're, they got a little more creativity. So uh, Xenoverse 2 for Xbox One. All right. My number three is X-Men Legends for Xbox. That game was awesome. Um I'm sure yes, Matt's gonna Matt's <laughs> gonna talk more about that himself. Uh, Matt, what's your number three? My number three is X Men Legends. <laughs> I uh, saw that coming. <laughs> uh, we played we played the crap out of that one. Yeah, we we sure did. All right, so Dave, what was your number two? Uh, my number two is another Dragon Ball. It's Extreme Budokai for the 3DS. And what I liked about that one is instead of the 3D, which you get on consoles, it goes back to like that old 2D fighting. Uh, kind of like Blaze Blue or something along those lines. All right. Uh, my number two is Ultimate Alliance. That's very similar to X-Men Legends, but it's just X-Men Legends, you have to play as X-Men characters, obviously, so you get all the villains, all the X-Men of that whole universe. Ultimate Alliance, though, you could play as Spider-Man and Iceman <laughs> and Wolverine and the Hulk all and Iron Man all within the same game, and it's awesome because... Like, you feel like you play as Spider-Man, then you're like, okay, I'm tired of his abilities. Now I'm going to be Iron Man. Okay, I'm tired of his abilities. Now I'm going to be the Hulk. Okay, and you just keep cycling. It's awesome. It was, It's such a great game, whereas Diablo, the same exact style, oh, is on. boring garbage. <laughs> oh, but he's going to no. trash Diablo. Don't even do it. No, but don't even do it. Ultimate Alliance, so amazing. Any, any listener, please disregard. Disregard Connor's last <laughs> remark. We apologize to everybody. <laughs> we hey, apologize. Have you, tried, have, you, have you guys tried that free one, by the way? There was like that new Marvel one that was free to play that just oh, came out. Do you know what I'm talking like about? Marvel Heroes or something like that. Yeah, it looked kind of like Alliance, but it was. Yeah, it was just, I, I tried I it. Uh, huh. Matt, what is your number two? My number two is Batman Arkham City, which I played on PC. Uh, this is where, uh, you know, it's the Arkham series of Batman games that recently all came out. Uh, this is one that I think this is the first one that allowed you to kind of free roam the whole city of Gotham. So it opened up the the map for Batman and, you know, you could just fly around, do side stuff. I re- it really opened up the game and it was awesome. Nice. So where are we at, Matt? Dave, with your number one? Numero uno. Uh, I'm going to go with, man, I hope we never have like an anime list because if so, I'm, I already <laughs> showed my cards. Um, the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm series. And if I had to pick one, I would say that the third one. Um, probably had like the best combination of story and multiplayer. Have you played any normal comic book? <laughs> I have, games? but I just I have, but I just don't. What like about them. Infamous? It's like it's like God of War on Infamous. wheels. Like, what about Infamous? With... You liked Infamous? I didn't really like it that much though. Infamous wasn't that good. You liked? I it. liked. I liked. Um, some of the abilities were cool, like the lightning one from the sky. I don't know. I just like the last superhero game I remember playing and not just absolutely hating was there was like a Spider-Man game for Sega Genesis where you like could use all of his abilities. And it was like the coolest thing because there wasn't really another game where you could like, you know, swing like you could in that game or like climb walls. I don't know. It there was, was that side one. scrolling right one, right? Yeah, it was. A side yeah, I have that one. Yeah, I know what you're really talking hard. about. It's yeah. extremely hard. I can still remember the first level because <laughs> I don't think I've ever gotten past the first level. All right, my number one is Ultimate Spider-Man for PS2. I've probably played that game close to ten <laughs> times. Only not because it's that amazing, but because it's super short and it's super short and it's that amazing. So it's just really easy to say, I'm going to go play Ultimate Spider-Man. Boom, the game's over. And it's got all of your, all the favorite bosses from any Spider-Man, you know. Uh, started off with the Shocker, and it just it's just so good. It's very much like the comic books, and it, it's great. So, uh, Matt, what is your number one superhero game? 
my number one is Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Um, I loved, I was Iceman. That was my guy. Um, I love being Iceman and I love, like Connor was saying, being able to experience kind of both universes with X-Men and the, the regular Marvel characters. So, um, and I think I related to that more, like I knew more about those comics. So I knew more about the, the villains and kind of the settings and things like that. So I was able to connect with that one a little bit more than X-Men Legends. How, how great in X-Men Legends was it when you were a gambit and you do the 52 pick up, 52 pick up. Yeah, the arcade the whole, voice. The yeah. whole screen would just go crazy with the cards. <laughs> and then in Ultimate Alliance, the same guy, when you'd put certain yeah. people in a team, like uh, you put oh, yeah, yeah. Iron Man, Hulk, Captain America, and I can't remember who the fourth guy, maybe Wolverine, and he'd go, the Avengers. And the Avengers. If you, if you put yeah. certain female characters, femme fatale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> the arcade narration. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. So, uh, you know, I, I was thinking about this. You know what Infamous could have used? That guy? Was Tom it? Brady. Oh, yeah. God. If Tom Brady were an Infamous, I think that game would have been my favorite superhero game. Yeah, <laughs> All right, so that was uh, episode 18. Please tell us what you think about our superhero games. Maybe there's a game that you play that we completely forgot. Uh, I, we covered a lot of the great superhero games. They're, it's a dying breed, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a discussion topic one of these days about where the superhero titles are at now, You know what's going on with that genre. Um, with you know the whole MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, just really taking off, and you'd think that yeah. these video games would jump on board. I know Spider-Man's coming out next year, but that's really about it. So uh, mm-hmm. we'll see where that happens. But please tell us what you think. Subscribe to us. Leave a comment. Uh, tell your friends about us. And as always, see you next week. And thank you for listening. <laughs>